C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters, letter number two. My friend, the monk, he had so many challenging expressions and so often he would he would point me towards something like like this a book like this maybe even just one sentence in a book like this or maybe a chapter and he'd say what do you think what do you think i want to encourage you to do that with every single chapter as we go through this book what do i mean by that maybe you don't share the whole chapter with somebody you know maybe you just share one of the ideas from that chapter with someone you know and then do what the monk did. Ask them, what do you think? What do you think? This chapter is perfect for this. I mean, honestly, every chapter is. But the monk also liked to say, rarely, when we encounter truth, rarely do we walk away comfortable. Comforted maybe, but comfortable? Mm, rarely. Rarely. And it's one of the reasons I love books like this. Because books like this, they confront you with the truth. The truth about human nature, the truth about uh, some of your realities, the truth about the spiritual battles. I, I don't know, before you started digging into this book, did, did you think that <laughs> you might have a tempter assigned to you? You might have a tempter, there might be a tempter assigned to your spouse, to your kids, to your coworkers, to your boss, to your in-laws. <laughs> so let's dive into this chapter. First of all, it starts with um, <laughs> Uncle Screwtape saying, the patients become a Christian. You're going to get penalized. You're going to have a punishment. And it got me thinking. There's even there's even right and wrong for tempters. There's even punishment for for tempters. But he says, don't worry. Don't worry. We can win them back. <laughs> we, we've won plenty of people. He says, partly because all of, all, of, all of your patients' habits are still in our favor. Let the, let the book ask you questions. The question the book asks me when I read that, and, and it's this, it's which of my habits are in favor of the tempter? Which of my habits? And then he kind of digs into that. He says, you know, one of our greatest allies right now in this journey is the church. He says, not, not the church as we see it, it, extending through eternity with all these unbelievable warriors, saints that, that hold it up, that keep it on track. But the church in his neighborhood where he sees you know he sees the local <laughs> hairdresser mailman he sees he sees normal people in there help him notice that they have squeaky boots they don't know the words to the songs they show up late for mass they can't sing they sing out of tune they're too happy they're too sad they're too serious they're having too much fun their kids are not behaving you know, help him notice this stuff. Help him to notice this stuff. <laughs> how, how often do I get distracted by noticing stuff like that? You know, he doesn't say it in the in the letter, but it's it's in a, in a sense they like help him notice that the priest uh, was late or the priest. He rushes out of mass at the end of the priest. The homily isn't, uh, you know, it just doesn't, I don't think it really, it didn't connect with me. It was too uh, happy. It was too historic. It was too practical. It was too uh, big picture philosophical. It was, I, I don't know, it was too much for the kids. It was too much for the, 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 scene, the retirees. It was too much geared towards just parents. There was too much humor. There wasn't any humor in it, right? Help him notice stuff where the church isn't what he thinks it should be. This ideal picture. And that's the second thing he starts diving into. Starts diving into. He says, at the beginning of any journey, at the beginning of any journey, we have this, we tend to have this romantic picture of it. Right, he puts it this way. He says, in, in all of life, transition from dreaming aspiration to laborious doing. You know, whether you want to learn a language, you know, you want to do a trip. Let's say you're thinking about, oh, I'd love to go to Italy and I'd love to be able to, you know, order cappuccino, you know, a glass of wine, a steak. I'd love to be able to order some pasta in Italian. And, and you buckle down to the hard work of trying to actually learn Italian. You know, or you buckle down to the hard work of actually planning the trip. You're thinking, oh, it'd be unbelievable to take a trip with my family. Maybe we can take, you know, 
I don't know, I had the chance to go to Italy with uh, eight of us, my family, my wife, my two kids, my two daughters, and um, our parents, my wife's parents and my parents, so eight of us, you know, and it's, oh, it's had, the picture was great, you know, and Screwtape says, look, there's this emotion, there's this emotion, there's this emotional promise, you know, and then the, oh, I don't feel like it in the moment. Uh, there's an expression that says the chief cause of failure and unhappiness is trading what matters most for what you feel like in the moment. You know, that trip mattered a lot, but in the moments like, oh, you want another day here? I mean, not everybody agreed on the whole blueprint of the trip, right? It, it's that laborious doing part. And, and Screwtape saying, like, help him notice the things that aren't what he wanted them to be in the church itself, in Christianity itself. Help them to notice that, wow, the person sitting over there, as they're going through prayers, he said, you're, you're praying, you know, maybe you're saying, you know, the body of Christ, or you're saying the Our Father, and help, help his mind flit back and forth from the words to the actual faces in the pew nearby. Help him notice that, you know, well, some of these people are, oh, they're not perfect. How can they? How can they? How can they be Christian or pretend to be Christian? He says, "Help them not to realize, or help them not to think." Wait a second. I'm so far from perfect, and I'm starting to consider myself a Christian. So, so maybe, maybe, maybe they're like me. <laughs> Wow. Wow. There's one, one other point that really, really challenges me in this, in this letter. And it's this. You know, the, the, the screw tape is saying, why, why does God allow this? Why does God allow this emotional gap? Right? Because sometimes it, it doesn't feel like the perfect place. Every time you go to church, does it feel like you're in heaven? I mean, the answer is no, of course not. Right, every time you 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 kneel down, maybe at home to pray. Maybe every time every time you're putting your kids to bed and you say, "Oh, let's pray together." Right? D does it always feel heavenly? Are there choirs of angels singing beautiful music, or are there times when you just don't doesn't, don't feel like it? It doesn't go. Maybe you're saying grace before meals. Maybe you haven't done that in a long time, and you're thinking, "I'm going to start doing that," and you start doing that, right? And or maybe you, you do it at home, but you don't do it when you're, you know, at a big family event, and you're thinking, or when you're out to eat, and you're thinking, "Next time we go get pizza, we're gonna we're gonna take a 30 seconds and pray before we eat," and you, you you you're about to do it, and you're thinking like, "There's people around. I don't I don't you know." But you want you want your family to have this 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 tradition of thanking God for the gift of food and the gift of togetherness and you're about to pray and, and the, the choirs of angels don't start singing then right it doesn't necessarily feel heavenly sometimes you feel like this is oh, this is oh, this is hard work this is not working there's maybe there's what he calls a dryness right and he's like why, why does why does god allow this why doesn't why didn't he rig the game why didn't he rig the game why didn't he rig the game maybe Maybe it's so you and I actually have choice. Maybe it's so you and I actually have choice. Blaise Pascal put it this way. You know, God set it up so that there's enough gray. There's enough gray that if you want to find them, you will. And if you don't want to find them, you won't. There's enough light and enough darkness. Enough gray area in the middle. Where if you want to find God, you will. And if you don't want to find him, you don't have to. He doesn't force you to. Maybe he makes it a little tricky. He gives you the experience of that dryness. So that you actually get to choose. You actually get to choose. You know, and then Screwtape says, that once the initial, once, once they, the people, the humans, our patients, you know, are, <laughs> once they get through this initial dryness successfully, they become much less dependent on emotion. And therefore, much harder to tempt. How's the book challenging you today? How's letter number two encouraging you, inspiring you? With whom will you share something from this journey? How will you share that? 
I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to, to take 10 seconds and pray. God, help me to figure out. If you want me to share something from this book with somebody in my world, help me to figure out who and where and when and how. Who? There's a prayer and a half. Hey, there's a prayer and a half. Thanks for the chance to be part of the journey with you.